Good morning. It is a joy to be able to worship with all of you this morning, to pause in our busy lives, to take a moment to reflect on how God is working in this community and in each of our hearts. A couple things real quick. Um, we are celebrating Holy Communion this morning. Normally it's on the first Sunday of the month, but because that was Easter this month, uh, we will be having communion together later in worship. Also, I want to say a word of welcome to all who are visiting with us this morning. Um, we're really glad you're here, and we hope that you find this to be a loving and welcoming place. And also to those who are joining us online in worship, welcome to you all as well. Um, we have had a cohort of folks over the last number of months who have been working on how we might be a more inclusive community, and specifically, they have been looking on how we might include the LGBTQIA plus community in our life as a church. And one of the things that they've done is craft a welcoming statement that was approved by the council. And so as a word of welcome as we begin worship, I'd like to read the statement that they put together. Calvary United Methodist Church believes that all means all. We open our hearts and our minds and our doors to all our neighbors. We gladly invite into our shared life all persons who seek a community of support where they can grow in God's grace. Regardless of your race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, ability, relationship status, or background, you are God's beloved and you are welcome here. Let us pray. God, as we welcome one another in worship this morning, we too welcome you into this space. Fill our hearts so that we might better understand where you are leading us as a community and in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I turn it over to Heidi, who is going to lead you in the call to celebration. Good morning. As the cloud of gloom that seemed to overshadow the followers of Christ passed away to reveal the brightness of a new day, may this day bring new hope to all as we allow the light of his spiritual presence to shine into our hearts. As the fear that filled the minds of the disciples and caused their faith to weaken was transformed to hope through his reincarnation, may the power of his spirit sustain us from within and bring us renewed courage so that we may be able to face the future unafraid. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Alleluia.
And the congregation said, Amen. Amen. Please let us take a moment and let us greet one another and warmly welcome each other to Calvary United Methodist Church. If there are any other young worshipers out there who'd like to join us up front, you're welcome to come forward now. How are you doing? Good. All right. Good. Can you guys all scoot in so we can sit closer since we got a smaller group today? I want to play a game with you guys called I Doubt It. All right? I'm going to explain it. It's it's also called Two Truths and a Lie, but we're going to play it. It's called I Doubt It. I'm going to tell you three things. Two of them are going to be true, and one of them is not true. And I'm going to ask you to tell me which one you doubt is true. So uh, let's, we'll do a practice round, all right? Does it make sense? We'll, we'll do practice. All right, we'll just, for practice, we'll do, here are three cities that I have lived in. Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and New York City. Now... We're going to go through, and if you don't think it's true, you can say, I doubt it. So, Pittsburgh. That's pretty simple, right? Baltimore. Who thinks I lived in Baltimore? Doubt it. Anybody else? New York City. Doubt it. Oh, well. I have never lived in Baltimore. I have lived in Pittsburgh in New York City. All right, let's do one about the church. How about that? I'm going to tell you three facts about Calvary. And you guys have to decide which one is true and which one isn't true. All right, so Calvary was built in 1893. And before it was, this is fact number two, before Calvary was built, where you're sitting was an ice skating rink. And the steeple outside, the spire outside is 300 feet tall. So there's three facts about Calvary. Now we're going to go through, and I want you to say, I doubt it if we get to the one you don't think is true. Calvary was built in 1893. <laughs> How about there was an ice skating rink where you're sitting? I doubt it. What about now 300 feet tall spire? Doubt it. Doubt it. You are right. You got it. There was an ice skating rink right here. Today we're learning about a guy named Thomas. And Thomas had a nickname. Does anybody know what his nickname was? <laughs> His nickname was Doubting Thomas because after Easter, which we celebrated last week, the disciples came and told Thomas that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And you know what he said? I doubt it. He didn't believe them. And then Jesus showed up. So sometimes there are things that are hard for us to believe, but God helps us to believe and to understand. So what I want you to remember this morning is when you hear something in church that's hard to believe, you're allowed to say, I doubt it, and you can ask questions, and God will help you to understand, and God will love you. 
Okay? Well, thanks, guys. Let's say a quick word of prayer. God, we thank you for Jesus, who was raised from the dead and who loves us each so much. In his name we pray. Amen. Hello? Okay. Here we go. Um, so I have a little video for all of you to watch. Um, it is for the upcoming VBS, which is going to be in June. Um, today after church we have a meeting, and if you are interested at all about uh, helping out with VBS and we need tons of helpers this year, then you can meet me in the parlor after church. So go ahead and play the video, please. anything like this. Welcome to a place where kids will build, explore, and discover that they were made by the ultimate creator. God, this is Maker Fun Factory. Today's kids are so creative. This VBS shows kids what a unique and wonderful creation they are. Everything's so hands-on, even the decorations. We got to make the snacks and even invent our own games. That was so much fun. This totally helps kids discover that they were intentionally created, that God has a really big plan for their life. I like seeing the kids that were inventors. It's great to see kids' imaginations running wild. I've never been to anything like this before. It's amazing to think of the change this is going to have on kids as they go back to their daily lives. They'll live differently, knowing that God created them and has a purpose for their life. I can't wait to come back again. Trust him, only trust. 
trust him, only trust him. A few thoughts this morning as we enter our time in prayer. Bob Richards had a special procedure done this week, but I see he's among us and back with us already. Bob, good to have you here, sir, and glad things went well. Amen, huh? Hear, hear. Christine Thomas is not back with us yet, but had procedures done this past week as well. She is in recovery and in a home for that recovery period. So our special prayers for Christine this week as well. Also expressions of gratitude, gang. If you see Brian today or Lita, Jamie is not here of course on Sundays, but through the week, a big prayer of gratitude for all of their hard work through the Lent and Easter Time and last Sunday, of course, with all of the brass and the choir and the, the beautiful flowers and all the extra programs that we needed, and it was just quite an Easter Sunday. So please, when you get a moment, say thank you to them. Also this morning, apparently, there are a number of us that still celebrate birthdays. I, for one, can't figure that out. I've canceled all the rest of mine. But there are a few this day, I'm told that Mark Wren... Beth Ober, both are celebrating birthdays today, and Millie Blackburn, Millie is up here in the front, she simply told me earlier today, tomorrow is her birthday and she's going to be 90 again. That's what she said. I think it's 92, right Millie? I'm not going to tell you how old Mark or Beth are, you are on your own, okay? But definitely prayers of celebration here in our family at Calvary. So with those thoughts, and I'm sure others that you've brought with you in prayer, some concerns, some celebratory, let us now go and pray together. I've asked Heidi if she would lead us today in the unison prayer. Heidi, please. O oh God, who through the resurrection of Jesus Christ has freed us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your light, Grant that by his abiding presence, he may bring us to the joys of life and life eternal. For it is through Christ, who for our sakes died and rose again, that we are able to share such faith. Amen. Gracious God, it is this celebration of the resurrection, the Sunday after Easter, and yet we pause and pray that the celebration and the, the music and, and the joys and the hopes have not passed, but are risen and with us still. We remember the Easter promise that you would be with us always, where two or three are gathered. So this day, Lord, we pray that you be among us, that you help us to find those signs that assist us in faithful living. Come among us this morning, whether you find us in doubtful moments, questioning the power of your presence, questioning if our needs and the things that we are concerned about can be assisted by that presence, or whether or not we can assist others in the midst of their needs. Lord, point us, as we have sung earlier, towards the God of glory and the Lord of love. So, Lord, help us this day, whether in the compassion of a friend, the pardon of an enemy, the hello of a fellow human being, one whom is familiar or one whom we've never met, whether it be through the, the hymns of faith that we share, hearing thy word spoken, or the moments of silence. Help us to listen for your voice, as others did that first Sunday morning, and the power of your presence. Lord, let us hear now as you pray.
Gracious God, as we give thanks for the many expressions and the gifts of life that we see all around us, always remind us of the gifts of faith within us. So Lord, this day, we ask of this and we pray, like the disciples did so long ago, would you please join me with one voice and one spirit, and let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. There are a good number of announcements today in our program. There are a few, though, that I've asked others to come forward and share. And as they do, I want to actually remind us of a few that aren't in the program. The Finance Committee will meet briefly after church today in the offices that I am in throughout the week. The Vacation Bible School group will meet in the parlor. And also confirmation classes are to begin today. Those 10, 11, and 12-year-olds among us, you've gotten personal invitations, and we will be meeting in the chapel area right after church. Finally, there is two other announcements, a special offering next week. Miles, would you please? As United Methodists, our church is connected with others, and six times a year across the United Methodist Connection, we take special offerings to support unique ministries of the church. Next Sunday will be the Native American offering taken to support the work that we do among Native Americans, not only out in the West, but also here in Western Pennsylvania. So an advanced word that we will next week have the information and the offering envelopes in the bulletin for you for a Native American offering. And the other is from our United Methodist women. Karen, if you'd come forward. I know that we had to scrape snow off of the car yesterday morning, but we have that same faith we spoke of in the prayer this morning that flowers will be useful, Karen. How's that sound? That sounds very good. United Methodist women. I drove through snowflakes this morning coming. Unfortunately, we have to think ahead. Oh. Can you hear it? Okay, sorry. Unfortunately, uh, our flower order has to be in by April 19th. So uh, think spring. Uh, there's orders uh, at the back of the church and over here. And um, we'd be happy if you would support our cause. Yes. Yeah. If you need one, put your hand up and Joan will bring it to you. Oh, look. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Our United Methodist women have made a substantial gift to this congregation since they started just a year and a half ago as a newly reformed, if you will, uh, group and have been so helpful in so many ways of our mission and also the programming of our church. We thank you. Let us continue to share those expressions of gratitude now with the presentation of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
Please let us stand. As the gift of creation continues to proclaim your presence on thy altar this day, Lord, may these gifts continue to proclaim to others the opportunities for fellowship, for faithfulness, for expressions of hope and of joy and of love. Bless the gift and the givers these days, Lord, we pray, and may they all continue to strengthen your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please, my friends, you may be seated. Thank you, choir. Last week we read from the Gospels the Easter morning story. Today we continue to read in one of those Gospels, the Gospel of John, 
the ongoing Easter story. And Heidi, if you would, please. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The word of God, written by the people of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What enters your memory banks? And they may be tucked way back in there whenever I would share phrases like this. Let's catch our breath. Or, take a breather. Or, I could really use a breath of fresh air. What enters your memory banks? For me, I immediately recall many years ago football and baseball training camps. Now don't laugh, but there was a time when I was running the 440s, and you'd be in a gym, and you had to listen to that whistle go, Wheep! and you had to run to the other end, touch the line, wait for the whistle, Wheep! back to the other end of the gym, touch the line, wait for the whistle, Wheep! and you hoped and prayed you would hear the words, take a breather. And as you fell on the ground, your body did just that. Or, in my memory banks, there were days when we were on stage and there were dress rehearsals, some of them quite extensive with large dance or production scenes. And you had to try stressfully to remember where you were, what you were to sing, when you were to sing it, which way to look, who to turn to, and what you were supposed to be accomplishing in that scene. You waited for the director to say, okay, that's enough, let's catch our breath. Boy Scout hikes, bike hikes, those moments whenever you knew there was a reason they said you should unpack at least half of that that's in your backpack. Let's pause and catch your breath. Of course now I get the same feelings, but usually it's because I walked around the block. What comes to your memory when you hear the phrases, let's catch our breath or take a breather, or I could really use a breath of fresh air? Of course, I know there's some of us here this day, when you talk about breathing, you may have in your memory banks those phrases where the nurse says to you, okay, now take a deep breath. Okay, short breaths now. Okay, and usually it's followed up with the phrase, the baby is almost here. You remember those for some of you? Years ago, Ellen and I were in one of our hospitals, which would go unnamed because they were in between renovations and they had a whole slew of us in the waiting room area for these babies to arrive. And the only thing that separated us was the curtains. And there were at least four of us there. And I have to tell you, there was a lot more going on than just the nurse's voice saying, take a deep breath. I will paraphrase. I can't believe you talked me into this. I always remember that phrase. And, and it was quickly followed by, this is all your fault. Yeah, take a deep breath. Our scripture today 
could be seen in many ways as a little glimpse of all of those examples. I mean, really, the disciples had been in training for quite some time now, for a number of years, in fact, all over Galilee, all over Judea, and now throughout Jerusalem. Their leader had taught them. They had worked hard. They had seen and been places they had never been before. And now persecution, condemnation, and death. You could say that the scripture today is an example of them in the upper room to catch their breath. Or was it to experience new birth? It's in those moments that I've learned, at least in my lifetime, that it's not just a physical recovery that your body is thirsting for. It also is partly mental and spiritual, if you will. Oxygen is needed for all of them. And it's at the very moments that I find the human race frequently seeking scientific explanations or understanding of what they're going through. Of course, today we can measure, even with our own watches, our heart rate or our pulse, and we try to determine scientifically if our bodies can continue. I think that's what's hidden in this text, Thomas. He says, scientifically, unless I see the mark of the nails, he wants some sort of visual proof before his body can continue not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. Of course, some of us rely on logic, or if you would, others, eyewitness accounts. I can remember laying on the gym floor going, well, I did it last year, I ought to be able to do it one more year. The others said to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. What about you? in a way, they asked. Maybe I should too, Thomas, under his breath, but I want to see for myself. Thomas presents all the above, doesn't he? You know, it's interesting if you research the four Gospels, Thomas is not mentioned in the first three. You do not read about Thomas in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You only find Thomas in the Gospel of John. In fact, it's 150 words plus that the author in the Gospel of John speaks of Thomas. And yes, when you hear Thomas, we refer to him as doubter, the doubting Thomas. In fact, in our everyday language, it still exists thousands of years later when she or he are questioning, they are referred to as a doubting Thomas, the pessimist among us. You know, I was reading a book by Joe Gordon this past week. I loved his definition of a pessimist. He says, a pessimist is someone who can look at the land of milk and honey and only see calories and cholesterol. Welcome, Thomas. But in the scripture, Thomas catches his breath. Jesus breathed upon them. Thomas wasn't there in the first meeting. But in this text, as it goes on, Thomas catches his breath. That same breath that gave Adam and Eve the gift of life. The same breath that that spirit went over the valley to give the dry bones in Ezekiel the gift of a renewed start. The same breath that God provided at that first Pentecost. That same breath, that moment of faith. For Thomas, it's a shame because really what we should remember him for is a different phrase in this text. My Lord, my God. Those were Thomas's words too. Perhaps he should be known as Thomas the faithful, not the doubter. You know, this past week, many remembered the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And as I was reviewing some of his sermons, this particular text, when it came to that moment of faith, Martin put it this way. He said, and I now quote, faith is taking the first step 
even when you don't see the whole staircase. Persons who know about taking those first steps are the ones we should remember. Frederick Beechner had a whole different insight, which I thought, as I smiled, and I quote, Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep faith alive and moving. Great stuff. You know, some people spend their time trying to come to terms with their doubts. Maybe, just maybe, it might be a lot wiser to spend our time coming to terms with our faith. Thomas did. In the text, it's also revealing that Jesus didn't judge or condemn Thomas. No, he didn't. He simply gave Thomas time and a chance to catch his breath. Hmm. Today, as we take communion, perhaps we can do the same. Amen. I ask if you would open in your bulletin this morning, there is an insert. Communion here at Calvary is an open table, which means that everyone is invited to come forward for communion, regardless of whether you are a member of this church or any church. Also, communion is an opportunity to receive God's grace and faith. The bread this day is all gluten-free, so if that's a concern that you might have, you can erase that concern as well. Would you share with me our opening prayer? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always loved you with our whole heart, and we have failed often to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not always loved our neighbors, and we have not always heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here on, on, on these gifts of bread and of wine. Make them be for us the presence of Christ so that we may become for the world the body of Christ. May your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with the ministry to all the world until Christ returns in final victory and we feast at thy heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. On that night, Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave thanks and said to those who had gathered, this is his body now broken for us. And he asked that we would share this bread as oft as we shall in remembrance of him. And on that night, he lifted the cup and he said to those who had gathered, this is the new covenant of his sacrifice for us. And he asked each and every time we would take of this cup, we would do so in remembrance of him. Communion is now prepared for each and every one of us. The ushers will direct you to come down the center aisle and return by the side aisle, if you would please. It is in tinction today, so you can take a portion of the bread and touch it into the cup and then take and receive communion. The table is now prepared. Let us come.
care of. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. 
Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand now as you're able and let us join together in our closing hymn number 261, Lord of the Dance. If you are visiting with us, I wanted to invite you to take a moment to fill out the welcome card in the back of your pew. We'd love to connect with you more throughout the week. Also, everyone is invited to join us now downstairs for a time of food and fellowship, so please join us for that. Uh, We're reminded in the scripture today and also in the sacrament of Holy Communion that Christ bore his wounds after the resurrection, and this is an important point, so I wanted to share a benediction that I like to share from time to time that comes it's a Celtic blessing, so I hope that you will receive this benediction. Go in peace, and may the God who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the path. May the God who serves with wounded hands open your hands to serve. May the God who loves with wounded heart open your heart to love. 
May you see the face of Christ in all that you meet. And may all that you meet see the face of Christ in you. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.